If you clicked on this video, chances are you've got an exam coming up and you want to top that exam or at least get a really high score. Well, you've come to the right place. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Carl and I'm an internal medicine doctor in the Philippines. And in this video, I'm going to share a study framework that I've used over the last 10 years to help me ace my exams. And I call it the fill the gaps framework. And it's the same approach that helped me rank first in medical school as class valedictorian, rank third in my physician licensure examination and rank first in my internal medicine board exam. And along the way, I've helped hundreds of students do the same and what I can tell you is this getting a high score or even topping your exams doesn't have to be that hard like it can actually be simple easy and fun so whether you're in college medical school or reviewing for your licensure examination I'll walk you through this framework to help you get a high score pass or even top your exams without all the stress let's get into it now whenever I'm studying for a big exam like when I studied for my physician licensure examination in the Philippines back in 2017 which is the exam that determines whether someone is going to be able to practice as a doctor in the Philippines, I always find myself asking, where do I even start? Like, should I start with biochemistry or pharmacology? Or what study materials should I even use? And what topics should I focus on? And will this information even come out in the exam? And it's overwhelming. And because I don't know where to start, I end up procrastinating. Days pass, weeks go by, and before I know it, the exam is just around the corner and I haven't done anything about it yet. But then I came across this article from Scientific American Mind. Like, it's a magazine that I used to be obsessed with and it said something that really stuck with me. If students make an unsuccessful attempt to retrieve information before receiving an answer, they remember the information better than in a control condition in which they simply study the information. Trying and failing to retrieve the answer is actually helpful to learning. It's an idea that has obvious applications for education but could be useful for anyone who's trying to learn new material of any kind. So I decided to try it out. I did practice tests even before reading anything, before opening the handouts or touching a book. And it was insanely hard. Like I got really frustrated. Like I barely answered anything correctly. Like out of a hundred questions, I probably just scored 20 or 30. Some topics felt vaguely familiar, but I couldn't remember the actual answers to them. And it was frustrating. And honestly, it's, uh, it's kind of discouraging. But then when I finally started going Going through the study material, something weird happened. Like I understood the material much better and much faster. Like it felt like my brain was tuned in and was paying more attention to information that actually mattered, especially the concepts that I struggled with in the practice test. And that's when I realized that this approach was helping me learn in a way that I had not experienced before. So I started developing a system around this idea, a method that I now call the fill the gaps framework or FTG framework. And it's pretty simple. Instead of reading everything and trying to memorize every single piece of information, the FTG framework helps you figure out what you already know and what you don't know yet. Because if you're studying for a licensure examination, whether you're a college or a med student or, or any kind of student preparing for a big exam, you already have years of knowledge built up. You've been through medical school, internships, clinical rotations, and you've seen these concepts before. So actually the real problem isn't that you don't know anything. The problem is you don't know which ones you've already forgotten and how to recall that information when it matters most, which is during the actual exam. And that's where the FTG framework comes in. Like it helps you find which topics and concepts you've already forgotten or what your knowledge gaps are before you even study the material. So that when you do open the book, or you watch your lecture video is you're not wasting your time on stuff that you already know or stuff that has a low probability of coming out in the exam. Now, the FTG framework, it works for two reasons. Reason number one is one of the biggest reasons that I use this framework all the time, especially when I'm studying for a big exam, because when you're preparing for something like the, the PLE, the which is the licensure examination for doctors in the Philippines, or even exams abroad, like the Australian Medical Council in Australia, there's a list of topics that keep coming up again and again. Now, obviously, you need a wide knowledge base and ideally you'd study everything. But the truth is, if you try doing that, you'll just run out of time. There's just too much information in your textbooks or your study materials. And that leads to overwhelm because you don't know what to focus on. That's why I use the FTG framework all the time. Like it helps me figure out what topics usually come out in the exam so that I can just focus on those. So even if I'm running out of time, focusing only on those high yield topics will definitely improve my chances of passing the exam instead of just 
trying to dilute my attention and study everything. Now, the second reason is that it's more effective than what most students are doing, which is highlighting, taking down notes, and rereading. Because the way the memory works is we understand information when we put something into our brain, like when we read a book or watch a video. But we actually learn and remember it when we pull that information out of our brains. And that's an active process. And that's why it's called active recall, because it requires effort. So yeah, it's gonna be hard. And I'm not gonna pretend that it's easy. Like for me, it's actually very hard and it's very frustrating, especially when I don't know the answer to that question. But I always try to reframe that difficulty. The more difficult the study technique feels, the more effective it usually is. Every time you recall that information from memory, it gets stronger, it becomes more stable, and it becomes easier to recall that information the next time, especially during the actual exam when it really matters. Now the FCG framework has three steps, which I call the three Fs of find, fill, and fix. Now step one is find your knowledge gaps. So before you read any book or handout or watch any lecture video, you should first do a practice test. So let's say you're reviewing for a big exam. You should be doing a 50 or 100 item practice test as if it's the real thing. And when you're doing the practice test, you should try to come up with your own answer first before you look at the correct answer because that's the only way this works. And what I just said might sound obvious to you, but you'd be surprised how many students I've mentored before who skipped this part because some of them, they did the practice tests, but they just simply looked at the answers and explanations without really thinking through that question. And that defeats the whole purpose of it. When you do it properly, it'll feel frustrating. Like you might think, why am I even doing this? Like I haven't even studied the, anything yet. But that's exactly how it should feel like when you're trying to find your knowledge gaps. The frustration that you feel now is what will help you remember that information much better when you finally get to studying the material. And like I said earlier in the video, doing practice tests before you study the material, it actually helps your brain to pay more attention to the parts of the material that actually showed up in the practice test. When you start reading the study material, those sections of the study material, they kind of stand out more and so you're more likely to remember them. Now, step number two is to fill your knowledge gaps. After the practice test, obviously you will check your answers and then you will go through each explanation and take note of the ones that you got wrong or the ones that you just guessed. If you guess the answer to a question and you got the right answer anyway, you should not be skipping studying the explanation for that. And then after reading the explanations, you shouldn't be moving on to the next number right away. What you should be doing is you should be going back to your study material and reading read everything about that topic. Let me give you an example. Let's say I got a question about the ureteric constrictions in anatomy, and I guess the answer to that question correctly. After I study the explanations about what the ureteric constrictions are, I'll still go back to my study material. In this example, it's the section of the ureters in the book First Aid, and I will review everything about that topic. Everything from its vascular supply to the path of the ureters, from the kidneys to the bladder, and what the surrounding structures are as it courses down to the bladder. And this is how you fill your knowledge gaps. Because if I don't do this, the only thing I'll ever remember about the ureters is the constrictions and nothing beyond that. And so the next time a different kind of ureter question shows up, I won't know how to answer it. And this is especially important for licensure examinations like the, the PLE, the AMC, or even the USMLE, where there's a set of high yield topics that almost always show up. Because you're not supposed to memorize everything. You're just supposed to master what actually comes up in the exam. Now step three is fix your knowledge gaps. Now this is what you should do after you've gone back to the study material and filled in those gaps. Now step three is all about testing yourself again and doing another set of practice tests. But this time it's using a different test from the first one that you took. Now. Why a different test? Well, because if you use the same one, of course you'll get a higher score just by remembering the answers. But that's not the point. The point of doing practice tests is not to get a high score, it's to find out what you still don't know about the topic so you can fix it. So this is the fix part of the framework. And so you want to make as many mistakes as possible while you're still in this, what I call as low stakes environment, like when you're just doing practice tests. Because in doing practice tests, your score isn't recorded. It doesn't affect your career at all and no one else even sees it. And so it's the perfect time to mess up. While on the other hand, the actual exam is a high stakes environment and that's when every mistake matters. So if you're gonna make mistakes anyway, you'd rather make them during the practice tests and not during the actual exam. All right, so we've basically talked about the fill the grabs framework and how you can use it for your exams and I definitely recommend giving it a try for your next exams. And if you're interested in more study techniques, then you might like to check out this video over here. It has three easy things that you can do to study much faster and more effectively 
effectively. And thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.